Recently, actually yesterday to be more specific, the news broke that Arch Manning, he's no longer the perfect quarterback according to 24-7 Sports, and he also lost that number one spot to somebody else. I don't get persuaded by these rankings. To me, I think he's the number one quarterback in this class, and that's my humble opinion. Well, it finally happened, and I'm not going to lie, I am really, and I mean really shocked by this, and it's also quite odd at the timing of this. We all know Arch Manning, no introduction needed, and we've made plenty of videos talking about him. Obviously, he's a part of the Manning family, so there's been hype around his name ever since he was a kid. To go along with that, in the past year, he was one of, if not the most sought-after quarterback recruits in the entire country. Everybody wanted this guy, but he narrowed his options down to three schools, Alabama, Georgia, and Texas, and ultimately, he decided to go with Texas. He's always been regarded regarded as the number one quarterback in the country, but not just that, he's always been regarded as the number one overall player in the country, but not just that, he has a perfect scout grade of 1,000 on 24-7 sports, which has only happened two times. Granted, some people think he deserves all the hype he's getting because he's 6'4", 215, and he has a strong arm. However, on the flip side, I would say about the other 80-85%, to 85 they don't think he deserves all the hype he's getting. He's good, and we know that we just don't know if he's as great as everyone tries to make him out to seem. Here's the real question. Would he be regarded as this once in a generational quarterback if his last name wasn't Manning? Most people think no. It's hard to really justify it because compared to all these other top four and five star recruit quarterbacks, he plays probably the worst competition. Recently, actually yesterday to be more specific, the news broke that Arch Manning, he's no longer the perfect quarterback according to 24-7 Sports, and he also lost that number one spot to somebody else. Yes, that is right. You heard me correct. Arch Manning is no longer the number one quarterback in the country. Look, I don't want to say that Arch Manning didn't deserve that number one spot, but here's what I am going to say. I think compared to all the other quarterbacks in his class, and they're outstanding, they've done a little bit more. It's not that Arch has done anything wrong, it's more of the other guys, they're insanely impressive and they have a great resume. The guy that took his spot, of course, he's awesome, but to be 100% transparent with all of you, these rankings shot me as a whole. They're definitely interesting to say the least, and you already know, we're going to talk all about it. One of the quarterbacks who I firmly believe should be near that top spot, he's not even in the top five. You're going to want to stick around for that. We also got to talk about Deion Sanders talking about Jackson State potentially playing Alabama next year. Also, Tennessee got more allegations. What's new? And Dabo Sweeney talking about DJ Uyunglele. I was seeing all these quotes about what Dabo said, and I thought they were made up and it was a troll or joke. But no, I saw the video footage and I was like, holy crap, he did say that. Dabo Sweeney's not too happy. As always, we're on the road to 300k, so if you want to see more college football videos, I really think you'd enjoy this channel. Subscribing to the channel is 100% free and it means so much to me and it helps us out tremendously. I would love to have you a part of the family. If you don't want to join, that's cool too. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's get all this minor stuff out of the way first. A few days ago, it was announced that the NCAA was going to hit Tennessee with 18 more infractions. It's not a big deal, in my opinion, because it's nothing to do with the current coaching staff or players. This is all stemming from what Pruitt did. This is nothing major, and like I stated, it has nothing to do with what's currently going on there. It's Tennessee. What do you expect? And I'm asking my Tennessee fans out there, I mean, come on now, are you even shocked by this? No. Compared to what Tennessee has been through the past 10 to 12 seasons, this is like a slap on the wrist. Moving on to our second topic of this video, Deion Sanders was asked if Jackson State was ready to play Alabama, and here's what he had to say. Mm -hmm. Could he potentially play in Jackson State? What does that no, mean no, to you? He's not going to play us right now. We're not ready for that. No, no, not what's, and we're not into sacrificing our kids to get a check. Uh, he got to give me another year. I got to get beef up in the front. The difference of, of, of Power Fives and HBCUs right now, those big guys in the middle. It's not the quarterbacks, it's not the receivers, the DBs, or the skill position, but those big dogs in the middle. We, we got to beef up that to be able to compete with something like that. Oh, man, oh, man. I like Deion Sanders. Most of y'all know this. I respect the guy a ton. I think he was an awesome player. I think he's an awesome coach. But I think he is completely wrong in this situation. He stated, quote-unquote, give me another year. Mr. Deion Sanders, Mr. Primetime, another year isn't going to prepare you for Alla freaking Bama. No, 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 no. Maybe if you had said Vanderbilt, Missouri, or a Power 5 team that's not so hot right now, yeah, okay. But when you're talking about the Alabamas, Georgias, Ohio States of the world, the USC's, 
No, they're not there. And they won't be there within a year, two, three. I think it would take at minimum five to six years for Jackson State to get to that level. I don't understand his logic behind, no, we're not going to play him this year. We're not ready, but... Yeah, give me another year, we'll be ready. And I understand it, it's 2022 and everybody's advocating for the HBCUs. So you're going to have those people run to the comments trying to say, Oh, Matt, you're trying to hate on the HBCUs. Do you have something against them? No, I don't have nothing against the HBCUs. It's common sense. Line up Alabama and Jackson State next year. Watch what happens. I think it would be more than fair to say that I'll give you this, Jackson State. We'll compare you to a weak team in the SEC. And that's giving you the benefit of the doubt, Deion Sanders. And look what Alabama has done to all the inferior opponents in the SEC over the past 10 years. Wait a minute. Hold on. Am I wrong about this? Let me know in the comment section. Didn't Jackson State lose to Louisiana Monroe last year? And what do you think Alabama would do to Louisiana Monroe? I like everything that Dion said. I love primetime. I respect him. I think he's doing an awesome job there. But next year, no. If he would have said two to three, maybe four or five years, I think that would have sounded better. Let me know what y'all think about that because I know we're going to have mixed comments and mixed reviews. And if you disagree with me, that's completely fine. We can agree to disagree. Moving on to our next topic, we got another interview with a head coach, but this time it's Dabo Sweeney talking about DJ Uyungole. I'm not giving y'all the backstory on DJ. We all know there's a major quarterback controversy at Clemson, and it's been that way for the past year. DJ was supposed to take that next step last year. The offense was going to be his and only his and he disappointed yeah there's no need to sugarcoat it he disappointed and that entire offense was terrible last year i don't even want to say that dj's been getting a lot of hate i think it's more of people stating facts and their educated opinions let's be real here anytime you have an opinion everybody's automatic response is oh you're hating on that person well let me offer you this if you sit there and throw 10 passes and you don't complete a single one and they all hit the dirt or they go out of bounds and i say hey man I don't think you're a good passer. Is that hating or is that facts? I can't speak for you, but me personally, I think that's more of a proven fact. If you make terrible throws and you have a bad game and I say you're a bad quarterback, that's not me hating, that's facts. But just like any coach should for their players, Dabo Sweeney, he's taken up for DJ Uyungle, and what he said, it is one of the craziest and funny things I've ever seen, so Matt wrote a clip. You know, my quarterback, and you mentioned him. I mean, this is a this dude's a freak. Yeah. You know, and, and people talk about him like he's some slap dick from East of Boga, <laughs> right. you know, community college. And and this guy can play the game at the highest level. <laughs> that beats everything I've ever seen and heard. That's a first for me. I've never heard of an East of Boca Community College. This is the comment I was looking for. Zach said, me and Davo obviously watched a different quarterback last year. I don't have too much to say about this. I'm not going to criticize DJ too much in this video. We know he didn't play good last year. We're going to leave that in the past, and hopefully he improves this year, and he proves me and a lot of other people wrong. I'm wishing him the best of luck, and even Davo stated this. Only time will tell, and I guess we'll have to wait and we'll have to see. I predicted a couple months ago that their backup quarterback right now, K. Klubnik, He'll eventually take over, but like I said, we'll have to wait and see. Moving on to the main topic, the main encore, the main reason you clicked onto this video, Arch Manning. He's falling in the rankings, and we're just going to jump straight into it. Here's a look at the new list. At number one, the new quarterback, the new number one overall player in the country, we got Malachi Nelson, who originally committed to Oklahoma, but remember Lincoln Riley, he flipped him to USC. The Malachi Nelson kid, he's the real deal, and everything you've seen on him, he looks great. A lot of people are asking, though, yo, why did he fall? What happened? It's the middle of summer. It's not like he's playing and he had a bad game. One of the close sources stated, with Nelson, who's the number one player, we have seen a larger sample size. So I guess that's why they bumped him up to number one. It makes total sense. And let's not try to overhype this situation. You can make a case for the five quarterbacks that are still ranked below Arch Manning that they could be above him. Out of every quarterback that's ranked inside the top 300, Arch Manning has the worst stats. And also to go on top of that, he plays the worst competition. Now that's not to say he's not a great quarterback. That's just stating obvious. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. It doesn't end there though, because this entire ESPN ranking list with quarterbacks, it's interesting. Going down the list here at number three behind Orch, you got Dante Moore, who's committed to Oregon. But Alabama has two quarterbacks ranked inside the top 25, which is rare. Alabama already has one five-star that recently committed. He goes by the name of Eli Holston. There's a lot of hype around him. But they also got the guy at number 23, Dylan, who is also a pocket passer. Here is the most shocking part, at least for me, out of this entire list. 
At number 27, you got Nico Imaleva, who's a quarterback who committed to Tennessee for $8 million. I don't get persuaded by these rankings. To me, I think he's the number one quarterback in this class, and that's my humble opinion. He's my number one quarterback. I don't understand how he's only a four-star and he's ranked that low. I love everything about this kid. He's six foot six, about 200 pounds, and he can sling that thing. My favorite part about Nico's game, and I've already said this, but I'm going to say it again, is the zip on his balls. I've never seen that before out of a high school kid. It's insane. It's beyond impressive. As to why he's that low, I have no idea whatsoever. If you want to have Malachi Nelson at one, that's fine, but I think Nico, he is better than Arch Manning, and if anything, he should be the second best quarterback. I want to read you off this comment, though. Somebody stated, 99.9% .9 of the people talking down on Arch Manning would give their right arm to have him on her team. Change my mind. <laughs> Yo, somebody replied to it and said, objectively, <laughs> I would not cut off my arm for any recruit. I just like having an arm. I don't know. My man's got a good point. I'm in the same boat but obviously this guy was just saying that, you know, for the tweet. He didn't actually mean it. I'm kind of lost here with that tweet because I don't think people are necessarily talking down on Arch Manning. I just don't think most people, they're buying into the hype. And obviously a lot of these recruiters, they're doing some second guessing because he failed. He no longer has that perfect grade on 24-7 sports and he's also not the number one quarterback. Is it safe to say that the hype is officially wearing off of Arch Manning? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I am very curious. But, uh, whatever. Peace out. Right there.